All right, so we've got our task list. We've been working on it. We have all our due dates, right? I've been completing tasks. Now, the last thing with task management, right, is not just having the list and putting due dates and whatnot. It's actually completing tasks. So what you should do is at the end or beginning of each day, and this is up to you, which makes sense for you. Generally, it's sort of how much energy you have in time. If um, you know that generally you get to school really early, um, and have access to a computer. Maybe you want to do this at the beginning of each day. Um, on the other hand, maybe if you have a computer at home and you're pretty busy, you get to school right on time, um, but you have time in the afternoon, then maybe you do this at the end of the day. So it's your choice, but it should be at the beginning. Don't do this in the middle. Um, you want to sit down at least once a day and go over your test task list. And what you're going to do during that time is you're going to check off completed tasks. Right? So let's say um, I've been working on this and you know what? I finished my Google Tasks tutorial, which is not literally true yet, but we're very close. So all I'm going to do, I'm going to put a little check mark on that and cross it out. Say that, um, let's pretend this is a couple days from now um, and I made my meeting with these two folks. I can cross that off too. Now, you notice it also checks it as I check over here. It checks it off over here. So if I uncheck, I can actually check in the actual calendar and it does the same thing on this side right kind of cool um, one thing to note is so after I check them off if I don't want to see them anymore because honestly if I have a big list it'll get a little crazy I can go to actions and click on clear completed tasks and it takes them all out Now the cool thing is it didn't delete them deleting them would be hitting the trash can so they're still around so if I want to look at them I can go back and look at view completed tasks and then it will show me so it's kind of a cool little thing you can do so that you don't have to see those tasks, but they're not going away entirely. But anyway, so when you're taking your daily task plan, you go through and check off completed tasks, take them out of your list. Okay, so I've got those. Now my list is smaller, right? Now I'm going to add new tasks. So, you know, it's the end of the day. Maybe some more things came up. So I realized, okay, now that I've completed these, you know what? I need to do an organization tutorial. All right, that came up. I'll add that. Um, and I can add other tasks, right? Then I'm going to look through and with my new tasks in there, with what I know now, I'm going to change the order of tasks based on new priorities. So in this case, uh, well, I do know that organization tutorial is more important than that. And actually, um, I should probably have it before these handouts too. So we'll put it up there. Okay. Then I might assign due date to it, etc. right? Just because you set up the priorities one day and the deadlines doesn't mean you can't change them later, right? It might turn out that something else becomes more important later on. You got to uh, raise it up or a deadline gets changed on you. Something becomes more or less urgent, right? So you want to, at the end of each day or again, beginning of each day, s change the priorities and make sure you're always keeping it fresh and you're aware of what's important. And then finally, the last thing is you're going to plan for the day to come. So looking at these tasks that I have, I can kind of say, okay, well, I really have to do the middle school scope and sequence now. Uh, so today at noon, when I have some free time, I know I always have half an hour of open time, I'm going to work on the scope and sequence. And maybe I'll put that directly into my calendar for noon to make sure I do it. Um, I generally do it that way because that really helps me. And then it kind of gives me a reminder. And so I make sure to do it at that time. If I don't put it directly in my calendar, usually that's a problem for me. Some people different issues. They just look at their checklist and they're fine. But for me, I like to stick it directly in my calendar. Um, so that's one way to plan. Another thing you want to think about is planning to work on the harder tasks when you have more brain power. So I'm someone that can actually think and plan better in the morning. I'm a lot more aware and alert. So I try to make sure that anything that's going to be kind of more difficult for me is something that I do early in the morning. So for instance, maybe if I'm going to study for a test, I might actually study for it in the morning. Um, instead of the afternoon because after a long day of school uh, and I'm tired, I'm just not going to study as well. I'm not going to get as much out of it. It's going to be hard for me to motivate myself or pay attention. So you know what? I'll take that into consideration to make sure that my studying happens in the morning. On the other hand, like this email to students to help with office furniture, I'll make sure to do that in the afternoon. I'll put that as an afternoon task because I don't really need to use my brain a whole lot to write an email that says, hey, can you please help out, right? Or make a phone call. 
right? That doesn't take a lot from me, and I don't need to be very aware, so I can do that in the afternoon. So you really want to think about when you're planning on how you use your tasks, about how much brain power, how alert, how much energy you have at various times of the day, and sort of plan to do your tasks uh, based on that.